you are first timers here at the Frank. A lot of new faces here. Thank you so much for coming out. We're absolutely delighted to be continuing the 11th installment of our Careers in the Arts lecture series. Um, it's such an honor to have Narissa Street here tonight. She's someone that we have worked with in the past. Um, she and her students performed at one of our um, exhibition openings. It was a phenomenal experience. And we're delighted to welcome her back to the Frank again so she can share her thoughts um, and her journey uh, regarding you know, developing as an artistic professional with all of you. Narissa Street is a multiple award-winning teaching artist who uses stories to turn her audience into actors. She has graced the stages of TEDx, South by Southwest, Images and Visions of Hope, Art Space USA, and her students have performed on stages across the country, most recently at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. She is the executive producer of the Black Broward Film Project and the founder of Girls Call the Shots, which is a teen filmmaking program. She is the author of 31 Days of Yes, copies right over here, and she's currently editing the book, Be Your Own Answer, a guide to self-care for artists, teachers, and leaders. Let's all give her a welcome. conversation. Uh, this will be more between me and you. Um, hoping that what I have to tell you is something that's of value. So um, my last name, that uh, right there, Street, that is my actual last name. Um, I am very grateful to my father for, um, for giving it to me. Um, that is just you know, you, you're not grateful for that kind of stuff when you're in school, because you can only imagine what that looks like um, during school. But um, now that I am, oh, hi, right, come on in. Okay, now that I am uh, someone who is outside of school and um, out and about in the public eye, it's a great last name. Like, you know, you really enjoy it. So, so first, my question to you is, what is it that you've come here for? Okay, this is an open question. This is the question I'd like some answers. Question that needs some answers. What'd you come here for, yes? My sister ordered that I come with her. <laughs> okay. Okay. Someone dragged me. <laughs> Someone dragged me. Um, all right. Um, what else? Who else came here for a different reason? Okay, what'd you come here for? I'm an artist. I'm a professional <laughs> artist. I wanted the inspiration. Okay. Okay, professional artist. Needs inspiration. <laughs> Needs inspiration. Okay. All right, why'd you come? Me? Yes, me. I also came for inspiration, but... Not a professional artist. Okay, that's that, that works too. So inspiration. So person, not an artist. Not an active artist. Ah. <laughs> want you to keep an eye on that for me, please. <laughs> not an active artist. Not an active artist who needs inspiration too. Okay. Hmm. Okay, all right. Why else did we come here? What did we come here for? I'll share. Uh -huh, sure. It piqued my interest. Okay. And what made it easier is because my friend is an artist. Okay. Okay, piqued my interest. I love that a lot of friends are in here. Piqued my interest. 
Okay, we're gonna go back to here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big my interest. My friend is an artist. to learn something new. <clears throat> okay? Yep. Are we good? Do we do does everybody see something that applies to them up here? Okay. audience before I do a presentation, most of them, unless I'm doing a keynote where you, know, you don't have an opportunity. But I ask my audience what they're looking for because it's going to allow you to find something in this presentation. I think we're going to hit everything. I think we're going to do a little bit more than that too. Okay? So here's how we're going to go today. You're going to hear my story in a nutshell. During that time, you're going to also hear how I make money. You're going to get something that you can use. This is very, <laughs> very important. This means nothing if you can't use anything. Okay, So you're going to get something that you can use. And then afterwards, um, they like me to do a, a question and answer. So, great. Was the work. If you've read any spiritual literature, this phrase in the beginning of was the word is something that is familiar to you. It's actually a quote from John first chapter. And the reason I use that particular quote is because the work that I do is all words. It started when I was a very young person. When I was a very young person, I think about four or five years old, my mother had a problem. And here was the problem. If it had words, it was in front of my face. If it had words, it was in front of my face. If it was a cereal box with words, it was in front of my face. If it was a street sign, I would be reading it. If it was a book, I would be reading it. She couldn't stop me from reading. So much so that when I was five or six years old, I think it was six, six, yes, because we were here in Florida, we went to this magical place <laughs> called a library. <laughs> In this magical place called the library, they gave you free books, okay? So, like, we went there. She got me a library card. <laughs> and during the summer, every week, what I remember is my little body carrying the ten books that you were allowed to check out <laughs> all the way up to... <laughs> And putting them on there. And the, the librarian, you know, the first time she met me and she saw me with the 10 books that I was allowed to check out, she thought it was adorable. You know, like little kids, they go and they pick out things and of course their eyes are too big for their stomach and there's no way that I'm going to be able to read all 10 books. Until I came back next week with all of them done <laughs> with another 10. <laughs> okay. So, me and that librarian, um, developed a relationship and it was a relationship of mutual respect as much as you can an adult can respect somebody who's about this tall but what it does is it lets you know the kind of person I am and the person that you might have been as well when you were younger 
there was something that you were obsessed with. And it came out weird, okay? It came out weird because young people, when they start out, the only thing that's going on in the inside of them, that is their whole entire world. And so when your whole entire world, for whatever reason, I was wired to read, I was wired for stories, well, what else is there for a young person to do but immerse themselves in the things that they're wild about, right? If you have an environment around you that supports that, it's great. Sometimes you don't. I was very lucky. I had a mother who saw that I was obsessed with words and reading the stories and engaged me enough to get me to a library. Thank God, because if we had gone to a bookstore where you had to pay for the books, that would have been a problem. <laughs> okay. So having a child like that requires that you build an environment around the child, or you don't. There are some obsessions that when you have the people around you that see them, they don't get it. It's too much. It's too much passion. You keep taking apart these pens. Why do you keep taking apart these pens? What is it that, why do you take these pens apart all the time? Why are you always trying to put things in your mouth? Why is this child always putting things in their mouth? We don't understand, we've got to stop it, right? Got to stop that. When the child taking things apart is probably an engineer in tiny form. And the person putting things in their mouth is probably a what? Chef. A chef. chef. <laughs> got to taste everything. And so, in your beginning, there was probably something that was this big for you too. This is how big it was for me, right? So, depending on the environment that you grow up in, maybe there is space for the thing to be that big. If there is not, what tends to happen is that thing gets pushed down. So it goes. So it goes. <clears throat> if it gets pushed down, <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that happens. Right? So, <clears throat> as I grew, and I, of course, was encouraged to be obsessed with stories and storytelling, I, of course, started to write because you're only reading that much. Eventually, the stuff that you put in is going to come out. There's no denying that. If you're obsessed with something, if you're immersed in it, it's going to eventually come out. And it came out. It came out for me when I was in school, in high school, in college, everywhere. problem is, when I got to college, I went to college for journalism because, you know, that's how you make money as a <laughs> word person. You go and decide that you're going to be in the media. So when I went to college for journalism, the first article that I wrote that I was really, really proud of, like it was an expose at our college, I decided about it. <laughs> Took it to my editor and said, all right, here we go, here it is. I got it in on time, here we go. The editor was like, oh, that's great. Okay, fantastic. When I saw it published in the paper, I was so excited because here was the beacon. And there was my name. My name was in the byline. What the devil? What? I, I'm not, I'm, I'm a writer now, right? And when I read the article, was there any word that I had put in there from before? 
I don't, was there, oh. there might have been like a quote. <laughs> there may have been a quote that I put in there, and I think that was about all that was left from the writing that I had poured my heart and soul into, because this was an important story, and I wanted to make sure everybody got it, and they got the nuances and the feelings and everything like that. And of course, being a journalist means you need to take all of that, you got to squish all the feeling off of it, and, and you got to give us the who, what, where, when, why. Okay. So the thing that had my byline on it was not my writing. I was devastated. I was devastated. I mean, like, when I say devastated, like, there's a smile on my face right now. But, <laughs> like, I was completely devastated. And so I realized, and when I went back to the editor, I was like, what? In my, because, like, in high school, you do your writing, and... The, of course, your, your teachers are excited. My teachers were excited because what? I could put some sentences together and I could make people feel something. It was amazing. But of course, when you get to college, they're like, nah! We need you to be able to write in a way that you're going to get hired as a reporter and a journalist. And so all that feeling stuff, all the stuff that makes people inspired, all the stuff that makes people feel some sort of empathy is not what they want in journalism. So, what I had in front of me was closed road. How am I going to be a writer and live? How am I going to be a writer and make money? Makes no sense. So what I eventually ended up doing um, is what every uh, lost child does in uh, college. I flunked <coughs> out completely. It was, it was like a flaming like a meteor just and um, yeah it was, it was a, just like a bonfire of failure was great. <laughs> so yeah so um, and I realized that okay well if I can't be a writer then I'll do the other thing that makes me feel excited and that is help people right? so I went to work for nonprofit. Um, so writers who go to work for nonprofit end up um, becoming marketers in some way, shape, or form, and event planners. Uh, and I went to work for an organization that was near and dear to my heart, and I wanted to do event planning for them, and I wanted to fix their lives, and I wanted to make sure that the organization was running smoothly, and I became what? A bull dog in China shop. I say specifically bulldog. It's actually the phrase is a bull in the China shop. But I say a bulldog because um, anybody who knows me knows that if I'm obsessed with something, I'm going to hold on to it like a dog with a bone. And I'm going to keep trying and keep knocking my head against the wall. So that's basically what I was doing. I was in nonprofit working for an organization that saw the potential but couldn't handle my enthusiasm. <laughs> Have you ever found yourself working for some place that sees your potential and can't handle your enthusiasm? My gosh, somebody's giggling in the audience. I know I'm talking to the right people. Um, but the thing about it is, when you're lost, you're going to hold on to anything. Because I had lost the thing that I actually wanted to do, which was tell stories. And, and when you're lost, you'll, you'll hold on to anything and you hold on to things too long, which is what I did. What I actually needed to do was let the space go. And a really good friend of mine who knew what I was passionate about, because I would talk about it all the time, the books. He said, well, why don't you just go work for a bookstore? I could get paid to be around books? What? And I mean, I'd been in the bookstore several times, and I just hadn't realized, like, I hadn't put two and two together. And so I left the nonprofit space and 
went to work for a bookstore, which was great and was safe. And of course, when I'm working for a bookstore, I'm not an actual writer, but what am I? I'm really close to writers. It's really kind of fun. Like, really close to them. Like, I'm not actually writing anything. <laughs> but, like, me and the writers are in the same room. Like, I can tell you, there are some amazing writers I've been in the same room with. Like, I've been in the same room with Maya Angelou. I've been in that same room with Deepak Chopra. I've been in that same room with Wayne Dyer. Was I writing anything? No, but you see how you all are like, wow, wow, wow? <laughs> that works for a little bit, right? That, you felt that, right? You felt like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Am I doing any writing yet? Not a thing. But what's great is, what am I getting from you all? Some approval, right? OK. So, I needed the approval because <coughs> I didn't trust the words I wanted to say. Yeah. Remember last time I had poured my heart and soul into something? I mean, like, if, if the person, if she had actually had like a little ninja hat on and the little you know, katana blade, if she had stood in that editorial office and done that, I would have felt like a little safer because I would have known it was coming, mm -hmm. right? But it, for me, it was easier to stand next to the writers and get your approval than it was to actually write the things that were on my heart. How many of you have ever been in a place where you didn't trust yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Here's the thing. If it is yours, it'll never not be yours. If it is yours, it'll never <coughs> stop asking you to claim it. And the thing, the words, never, never left me. Ever. They never left me. And that's when you know it's yours, when it doesn't leave you. <coughs> that's when you know it's yours. So, I had to get to a point where I trusted myself. And here's how you get to a point where you trust yourself. You don't, you actually don't. Hold on, let me, let me be clear. You don't ever get to a tr point where you like trust yourself before you step out when you don't trust yourself. Like it's like this weird thing where you never just arrive there. You have to take a tiny step. And when you take that first tiny step and say, okay, you know what? This thing is still, I still want to tell these stories. I still need to be in these words. I still need to do this thing. When you take that first tiny step, you're not going to trust anything you're doing still. But what you are going to trust is the urge in you. Not you, the thing in you, whatever it is. If it's being a chef, if it's being an accountant, you just love these numbers. If it's taking apart things, if it's helping people, you're not trusting yourself. You probably shouldn't trust yourself because there were some things that you did wrong, right? You did some things wrong. Here's the thing. There were some things you did wrong. Here's the thing. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Things you 
did wrong, not going to matter. What you're doing, the urge, the mission, that's what matters. And that will make any flaws that you have perfect. What you are going to do after you stop worrying about it. What you are going to do is you're going to take the first step that's within you. You're not going to understand where you're going. Remember when we started in the beginning, the thing that you're obsessed with when you're young is overwhelming and it's crazy and it doesn't make any sense. So you're going to have to stop doing the rational stuff. Start moving towards something that's joyful for you. So I did that. And the first thing that was joyful for me was helping other people. And so it was easier for me to put the words that I still didn't quite trust coming out of me, it was easier for me to put the words in service of other people. And that's when I went back to the nonprofit world. I didn't fully step into the nonprofit world because as I said, we're gonna to get to uh, making the money. The organization I started, Girls Call the Shots, was my saying yes, fully. Not using my words for other people, not standing next to the writer. But speaking and telling stories with girls who had stories of their own. And the only way that I could touch the girls who had stories of their own is if I told my story. The only way that I could be speaking anything of truth is if I told them my truth. And when I saw the words that I spoke reflected in the eyes of the girls that I worked with, that is when I started to trust them fully. The thing, oh wow, <laughs> the thing that you're here for the art, the creativity, the urge, it doesn't make sense until you see it reflected in other people. It will never make sense when you are keeping it to yourself. It's not for you. That's why it doesn't make any sense to you. That's why you're not making any money from it. Because you're keeping the best of it to yourself. Let it go. And more.
more will come. Oh my God. When I started doing this work, do you know how many more stories I found? How many more people I was able to connect with? How many more books started to come out of me? It was only after I started doing this work that the book came. Your words, your art, your creativity, your life is not for you. The joy is going to come with other people. some exhibitions at a place called 1310 Gallery. It's an amazing space. And every May, I would do um, a community-centered exhibition. Uh, I helped a team. I was actually the writer on a short film uh, with a 48-hour film festival. And our, our film won uh, the festival that year, which was great, that particular organization. Um, I started the community organization, which is Girls Call the Shots wrote two screenplays after that, had three amazing major clients. One of my clients, um, one of my former clients, which is great, it's great when people outgrow you, one of my former clients um, is a YouTuber, and he is, um, he's been everywhere. Um, and he got to the place that he is, and a, a few other major clients as well, um, because we helped him fix his story. We helped him get his story right. And so now his story is, is everywhere. It's amazing. Um, I've been all kinds of places as far as conferences. The type of speaking I do here, I do every place else. I do other places. I do a lot of keynote speeches. I do a lot of workshops. I do a lot of seminars. Uh, I'm executive producer on a feature film. I've won several awards. If you Google me, you'll see them. <laughs> one right there. <laughs> that one right there was a problem. So after igniting all of this amazing passion in other people and starting to write all of this, the, all of this stuff right there, all of this is writing. All of, this, all, all of that is writing based. Okay. In order for me to do the annual exhibitions, I was the lead marketer on that and I was the lead um, grant writer for that. So all that stuff is writing based, right? However, I was still not quite happy. And here's why. All of those things still had a little tinge of the thing I spoke about before. All of it still had a little bit of the approval seeking in it. There was still a part of me that was afraid that if I went all the way in, all the way in, to just the thing that gave me joy, that I would lose the money. work for me. So I started to do something really amazing. So it's this thing. I know you might have heard of it before. It's this thing called self-care. Okay. Self-care. So like here's what self-care looks like. Self-care looks like going to the movies and like watching 
not the movie everyone's talking about, you know, like the, the, like the, the, the think piece about something amazing. Going to the movies and watching like the silliest and stupidest movie, but it's like a romance, like it's a rom-com, like those are like my absolute favorites. <laughs> Netflix has this channel called Lifetime. <laughs> and I'm sorry, not, not Netflix, I'm sorry, Infinite, Xfinity, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> Lifetime, right? I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movies on Lifetime, right? Like, the characters are ridiculous and like, the characters are completely like, you can predict everything that they're doing. They're <laughs> the most predictable characters. The storylines, what? Everybody can predict these storylines. I cannot stop watching these things. <laughs> it is the most amazing thing ever. Why? Because it has no redeeming value to anybody but who? Me. What? <sighs> Mangoes. Okay, you, you know. <laughs> okay. That's my mango plug right there. Right here. Um, I don't know who, like, what, what God was on when God made mangoes. <laughs> like, like, they're like the the color, okay, the vibrant colors that all of them are. And then, like, when you slice them and eat them, <laughs> what are you talking about? Seriously. Like, I dove in. One summer, I was just like, it was just going to be mangoes all summer. And I really did not care who knew about <laughs> mangoes. But <laughs> <laughs> so what's amazing about that is this. When I decided that self-care was going to be the way I went, this is what happened. What? Look at this. I can't, I can't with this. Like, this is the stuff that happened. What? After self-care, after like my diving into self-care, more media, more opportunities, more stuff, and 10 times more fun after the self-care, after not worrying about the money, like more stuff came. We don't trust our joy. We don't trust our joy. And when you are joyful, you're attractive. What? Trust your joy. <coughs> People can't help but throw opportunities at you because they want you around, right? <coughs> Like, you want to be around fun and joyful people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Holy Toledo. You see that cheesy smile right there? <laughs> okay. Cheesy. All right. I was having fun. That is a picture. That right there. Right. What did you just say? I said you like, I look there. Like, I can't contain it, and I absolutely yeah. can't yeah. contain yeah. it. Super red. Oh. Like, I cannot contain myself there. That was... Uh, the Arts Teacher of the Year came after that. Arts Teacher of the Year for theater, right? And so this, why I was exuberant there, was I got to hand off the Arts Teacher of the Year for theater to another theater teacher, and she was just as dope, and she was just as awesome. And I got an opportunity, I, when, we, when I won that award when, in 2017, I didn't have an opportunity to talk and really talk about what it takes to be that kind of person. And I got an opportunity to really tell people, look, teachers are dope. Art teachers are even more amazing, okay? So she completely deserved that award and I was so, so happy to be able to just, just to share that joy. And then this, this article right here was me going to South by South, even know if you understand how amazing South by Southwest is in Austin, Texas. It's this conference where they bring together thousands of people from across the globe and we just get to talk to each other about ideas. 
What? <laughs> Not only was I speaking there in 2018, they asked me to come back, like, for real, and gave me a bigger platform this year. Why? Because I was joyful when I went there last time. They let me sell my books there. What? Like, I got to bring books and sell them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what? And then, and then some, some random person had this, like, I'm not, she's not really random. She's like this really amazing fashion designer. And she did this call for, for people who weren't models. I was like, sure. She was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you. She's, she's like um, <coughs> from the Ukraine, so I can't really do the accent properly. But she just couldn't wait to drape me in something beautiful. What? Like, really? That's so cool. <coughs> oh my god. But all of that stuff came when I started to care for myself and just be in joy. <coughs> so, <coughs> the last one, I'm, I'm gonna see what I meant, actually. They, oh, okay, great, got some time. So, the, also the thing that came was, was this, which was amazing. Um, something that I've always wanted to do for forever is just be involved in film. And I was able to connect with these amazing, amazing storytellers who had the same vision for helping people <coughs> that I did. They brought me on board. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. They brought me on board just so I could give them ideas and words. I can get paid for that, really? But there's no way that I wouldn't have been ready for an opportunity like this if I wasn't caring for myself and if I wasn't a nice and joyful person to work with. That team right there, they're some of the most passionate people I've ever worked with. And they have fun all the time. If I had been like a little sourpuss, you think I would have been able to do that? No. You can't dive into your art and do it without any joy. Let's see. Let's see. They told me how to do this. So this is it. So delightful. <gasps> These eyes have seen. These eyes have seen. History when it was the present. Old school when it was the new. Segregation of schools, beaches and pools. But back then, we had our own. We all we got wasn't just set, it was owned. And we owned the block. We didn't just run it, brick by brick. We built this. We knew the future was coming. But now the future is here. Our history is starting to disappear. The next chapter in this story seems unclear. So we taking a second to reflect. Spark dialect. Don't call it a reset. Just take in a deep breath. And listen to the truth from the elders and the youth. To move forward, we have to look back. And spread love and appreciate those that have given back to their community. The tale of sibling towns brought to you through a movie screen. Daddy in Liberia. The future is here and is always on the way. What are we going to do to maintain? In our community, whether we lived in Dania or they lived in Liberia, the, the northern section of Hollywood, we never actually acknowledged that there was a line, a, a political border, as you would call it, that divided Hollywood from Dania Beach. Our black community was one. So we're in, we're in post-production right now. We're, we're seeking uh, post-production funding and support. And we've gotten um, some amazing support. Our, one of our, our directors was acknowledged as um, a leader in Miami and was, uh, was given a, a fantastic fellowship uh, with an organization called Radical Partners. 
Um, and our team is just, I mean, just amazing. But you can't attract people like that if you're just, like, if you're not happy. So here's what yield means. There is the call, there is an urge within each one of you. How do I know that? Because you're sitting in front of me. This is not an accident. It's not. Whether you were dragged here or called here or told to be here or it piques your interest, this is not an accident. There's something in you that needed this call. And so what I'm asking you to do is yield to it. Open up. Let it go. Let it be seen. Let it be experienced. Drop it into the community. Let it have an impact on more than just you. Stop being selfish with it. Yield to it. Oh my goodness. I wish I could let you understand what I feel when I'm pursuing this thing that is so hard, let me tell you, being a good storyteller is not easy. I have made more mistakes in storytelling than all of you have in this room combined. I have lost six-figure contracts for an error that was like two paragraphs. But I've also gained multi-million dollar contracts for the companies I've worked with. I've embarrassed my mentors for telling the wrong story at the wrong time. But I've also won awards. That's part of it, though. You are resilient. That's part of it, though. You're resilient. But you've also got to believe in the thing that is trying to come out of you. You've got to yield to it. So here's what that looks like, going back to the self-care. Repeat after me, you don't have to be nice, don't have to, be nice. to do good. To do One more time, you don't have to be nice, you don't have to, be nice. To, do good. to do good. All right, here's what that means. So those of us who are in creative fields, because of the nature of the work that we do, it wants you to share it. It wants you to share it, right? However, <laughs> there are going to be people who are going to be like, oh my goodness, I so want to expose you to a wider audience. How many artists in the room have heard the word exposure? Oh my goodness, look at there we go. There's some hands that go up, yes. All right, so that's delightful. Does the exposure make you Okay, I, yeah, you're, you're like, no. <laughs> yeah. If it's not making you happy, it's not doing any good. It's just not. And so here's the thing. Doing good needs a redefinition. Doing good has to be good to you. So if it's not giving you joy, it's not doing good. If it's not feeding your soul, it's not doing good. It has to feed your soul first. You don't have to be nice to do good. So how does all of this work for you? You have at your chair, the nice folks of the Frank have provided this for you, a golf pencil and an index card. Okay. Every chair has one, if not, it's in the chair next to you. You are going to take from me You're gonna steal from me the way that I make money. You're gonna steal it from me. I'm gonna give it to you actually, but you know, kind of like it feels more controversial. 
And then after you've done all of that, right, this was all the preparation, you got to try it. That's number five. When I started working with those girls and realized that what they really wanted from me was not my expertise on how to write a good screenplay and my expertise on how to frame a shot properly. When I got from them that what they really needed from me was my story so that they could see themselves better, I decided to try more of it. Maybe I should be telling my story. So I decided to try it. If it sucks, guess what? You got some feedback, right? You're resilient. Try it. You'll figure out what works and what doesn't work. As one of my virtual mentors likes to say, if it isn't right, it will lead to right. Try it. And once you figure out what you're going to do, you're going to do number six. And number six is prepare yourself for the new demands. So remember when I was talking before, I talked about I had, uh, okay, yeah, that's right. We had this conversation before. I talked about how when I started to do this work that I had gone through all of these exhibitions and these awards and everything else, and at the end of it, I was still unhappy. Part of that being unhappy was that I had not been prepared for all of the new demands that were coming because of the work that I was putting out into the world, because of the work that I was no longer hiding, because of the writing I was doing now. I wasn't prepared. And so what I want you to take from that is you need to prepare yourself. When you start to share the work that you're supposed to be doing, the creative stuff, you're going to have new demands. And so after you have the new demands, your next step, your next step is this one, and this is one of the most important ones. The next step is to trust your joy. Even if the things that you do work, remember I had said, I was doing all this great stuff. I was getting a whole bunch of approval. It wasn't working for me because I wasn't happy. Trust your joy. If you're not happy, you need to start to look at what you're doing and make some decisions because it's not sustainable. If it makes you unhappy, it's not sustainable. We need to redefine the word sustainable. People stay places 10, 20 years, and they're peeling away their health because they're upset, because they're not happy. You need to trust your joy. That's essential. So, last two steps to this. Keep doing it. There's going to be a day that it sucks. Notice I have a smile on my face as I'm saying that. It's like going to suck. I love the word suck, by the way. Because like, it just completely encapsulates. The work that we do, it's intangible. Like, 
Sometimes I'm jealous of visual artists because at least visual artists, like when they're done, they have this thing that you can put your hands on and you're like, oh wow, that was like a great art piece and you can see it on the wall. What, I'm ideas and words. What am I gonna do, what, I'm gonna grab the, what, what? <laughs> this is my work, everyone. <laughs> I'm ideas and words. Thank God they invented books, okay? But still, the crux of my work is storytelling, and the crux of my work is what remains with you when I'm gone. It's not something you can look on the wall and see. It's something that you have to feel in your heart. So I better do a damn good job, right? So that I leave something. And so you gotta keep at it so you can get better. And the only way to keep at it is to practice self-care. That's your last step. The only way to keep at it is to practice self-care. That is the only way. And again, I told you my self-care is like lifetime movie. And Hallmark is going to soon start with the holiday specials. I don't know if you guys understand like, how excited I am about these Hallmark. What the Christmas, the whole line. And then even worse, Food Network has like these holiday baking shows. <laughs> like I binged on the, ho the Halloween baking championship right now. I haven't gotten a chance to watch the last episode. But like three chefs are neck and neck, and the home baker, she's really like showing out with these people. <laughs> Has no redeeming value to anybody in this room but me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, it keeps me happy. Okay? It keeps me happy. I'm gonna go to uh, uh, the bicycle shop over the weekends and redo, replace the tires on my bike. Bike riding has no redeeming value to any of you, has no impact on my <laughs> community work. But I like the feel of the wind on my face, and I like the smell of fresh grass in the morning. It keeps me happy. Right? So, when I'm happy, this is the kind of stuff that happens. <clears throat> Uh, they, they, you know, sometimes, somewhere in every conference, like, you're supposed to show your work. So this is me showing my work. <laughs> so, so you're supposed to show people what you've done. So this is me showing my work. Um, these are places I've been featured, um, conferences I've worked at, clients, and, um, and awards. They're all there on the board, me showing my work. However... <coughs> That's not really important for you. Here's why that's not important for you. Because none of this has anything to do with whether or not I can make money. I mean, this is, this is cute, this is all nice. None of this has anything to do with whether or not I can make money. And so we're gonna go into that right now and I'm gonna give you 10 quick and dirty, 10 minutes of quick and dirty, this is how you make money with your art. So you've got the steps to sustain your art practice, right? Here's how you make money with ideas and words, which is really the crux of every artistic practice. Whether in the end you have a tangible product, your artistic career relies on your capacity to properly handle ideas and words. And here's the first thing that you need to do. You need to develop a practice of 
writing it down. I've come to the end where I know my word is good. That what I what I needed to hear was what needed to be said. And so you need to write down every idea that comes to you. I know that sounds a little much. It's not. When I say you need to write every idea that comes to you, I have on my phone something called Easy Voice Recorder. I went to the trouble of paying the $3.99 for a modified app that has some amazing modifications. It lives on my phone, and anytime I have an idea and I don't have a piece of paper, I'm recording it on my phone. Why? Because your word is good. Your words, your ideas, have value as artists. Your words, ideas, are seeds. Most people in the world understand something by its fruit. And so what they do is they look at a thing, whether it's a art piece, a, a theater performance, and they look at it and they say, oh, that's the product, that's the fruit. <coughs> they consume the fruit, and they think that that's it. They consume the fruit, and if you're like most people, most people consume the fruit and throw away the seeds. You, as an artist, you breathe seeds. Everything you do is a seed. Everything you do as an artist has more than one iteration. The idea that you have has value, and what artists have done for centuries is they have their idea and think that it is the fruit and give away the fruit. It is a seed. I promise you that the thing that I've produced right here is a seed. Every thing that I have from here, I can do about five or six different iterations of this thing. This can live as a short film. This can live as a workshop. This could be two or three different workshops. This can be an Instagram post. This can be, well, I don't know, a theater piece. It could be a poem. It could be a song. But what happens is you think that what you've produced is just that one thing. You need to write every idea that you have down. And you need to look at the ideas that you have and see how they iterate. Iteration is what tech people do. They start out with one thing, and they call it a 1.0. And what happens? They work with it a little bit, and they say, hey. We need to add something to this. And what is it? A 2.0. Now they have two things. As artists, we don't see the value in the work we do. We don't understand their seeds. Everything that you do has value. Everything, every idea you have, even if you don't see it right now, that's why you've written it down, because you can't see it now. But trust me, you're going to see an Instagram post. You're going to have a conversation with someone. You're going to be sitting on a bus, driving by something, and there it is. Ah, that's what that was for. So you've written down every idea. You've worked with it to see the iterations. And then you've done some research. Here's your research. How do I protect this idea? I need you to write the word protection. Notice I have said nothing yet about where the money is coming from. Because if you don't do these three things first, you'll never get the money. You need to find out how to protect it, whether it's copyright, trademark, patent. Did you know that there are some artistic processes 
visual or art, artistic processes that can be patented. Have you patented your work yet? Have you looked into that? That's what we do first. Then, and here's my favorite part, here's where the money comes. A, B, C. If you work anywhere in sales, is a, um, ooh, the term just came, left me, I think it's an acronym. Um, if it's not an acronym, please, please forgive my grammar. <coughs> Always be, and if you're in sales, they say closing. In the arts, that's not what we do. Always be closing. Okay, so in sales, always be closing. And closing means that you are in front of a client and you're trying to get the sale from them. Mm -hmm. So, so it kind of sounds like this. Oh, well, great. Here's here's my book. So, when do you think you're going to make a purchase? That's that's your close, right? It comes off very salesy and it it kind of leaves a little thin, slimy veneer on you, right? <laughs> because remember, we went back and we talked about how we we're doing our work because we enjoy it, right? It's something that gives us pleasure. And so to have that close on it kind of feels a little slimy to most people. <laughs> so here's what we're doing in the arts. Once you have written down your ideas and you have looked at the iterations of your ideas, please do not skip these first steps. And you've looked at how to protect the iterations of those ideas. My mentor has given me, just to give you how deep this goes, my mentor has worked with me such that I have a non-disclosure agreement with me on my iPad as we speak. Meaning that anytime I have a, a conversation with someone, I need to have it with me because she knows what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have some sort of brilliant idea. One of my colleagues keeps non-disclosure agreements in her trunk of her car because she knows she's going to run into somebody and when she starts having a conversation with them, they may be interested in her ideas. For us, it's not always be closing, it's always be communicating. Remember how I said in the beginning, to stop being selfish and stop keeping it to yourself. Here's how artists make money. They let it go. Let it go. Talk about your ideas. Remember the first three things we did with those ideas? We got them in a format that made it easy to communicate. We looked at the iterations of that idea. How many ways can this idea live? And then we looked at how to protect them. So when you start communicating to people about what your idea is, you can do so in joy and with trust. But you're always communicating. You're always telling people about the idea that you have that needs to live that needs to be expressed. And you're trusting that the right person is going to see this. It's value. They won't see the value if you're not talking about it. You think that people are just going to walk into an art gallery and see your work on the wall and say, really valuable. They have no idea. They don't know. They don't understand. 
what it took for you to get that thing on the wall. They don't understand how many hours it took for us to get, you saw that trailer was what, how many couple minutes long? How many hours it took for us to do that? So when I ask for my executive producer fee, I can do so with confidence. And I'm going to get it with confidence because I understand its value. How do you know its value? What did you do before? You wrote it down. You looked at the iterations and you looked at how to protect them. If it stays in your head, don't count on your head because one day someone's going to ask you a question and you're going to be in a bad mood and you're going to forget how valuable you are. It needs to be written down. You're not making money as an artist because it's not written down. If you don't get anything else from me today, Understand that you will not make the money you're supposed to make if you don't have your stuff written down. Always be communicating. And what you're communicating is the value. And you won't know the value if you're not sold on it yourself. And you won't be sold on it yourself if you haven't taken the time to look at it. Get it out of your head. Get it on some paper. Take the time for it. Stop playing with it. You know how many people are waiting for you? They're waiting for you. You're playing. Always be communicating the value. So, <laughs> Here's the last thing, and here is the secret that I don't think anybody wants anybody else to know. <laughs> About how to make the money. This is my favorite. This is, this is I think, the most, my favorite part of being an artist. Who determines the value of your art? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You see a smile, my <laughs> <laughs> Who do we think, who, what's the story about that? The story about that is that there's a market, right? And, and oh my gosh, you know, the, here's what the market says today, and this is how much this book's going to sell for today. This is, this is the market, right? <clears throat> Why are you listening to the market? When... The market has no idea how much time, how much of your life, how much it's cost you to do the work you do. And here's the other thing. You are a unique, unrepeatable individual with an amazing vantage point. So there is no market that exists yet. If you get that, then you can set the price for what you bring. Do some research, though. Mm -hmm. So you could call it what you need to call it. I'm an executive producer. Why am I an executive producer? It's one of the highest paid things on a film. <laughs> Wait. Do I want to be a production assistant? No. <laughs> Why, when I have a choice? I did some research, I know what I do, I know what I bring to the table. Look, ah, that's the thing, that's what I do, that's what it's called, great, perfect. I'm an executive producer, great, thanks. Why do you think it's any harder than that? Give yourself the time, understand what it is you bring to the table, do some research, write it down, protect it, I've got contracts all over the place for everything I do. Get out there. Let it go. Get out there. Stop sitting on it. Get out there. But get out there smartly. Hopefully I gave you what you needed. Get out there smartly. Write it down first. 
get out there smartly. Look at the iterations. You have no idea what the work you, you could do is going to blossom into. How many, how many filmmakers knew that their movies were now going to be on the internet 20 years ago? Nobody. How many people saw Netflix coming? <laughs> Nobody. The film industry is losing its mind about Netflix. Netflix now is able to affect the Oscars. Do you hear me? <laughs> Come on! Protect your stuff. Get out there. Everything's possible. Understand your value. All right. So, let's go back to what you said you needed. Okay. Uh, someone dragged me. Was it okay? Did, was it all right? Whoever said someone dragged me, was it okay? Yes. You good? You good? All right. Perfect. All right. Um, professional artist who needs inspiration. Did you get it? Yep. All right. Great. Person who's not an active artist. Are we, are we changing that? Are we figuring this out? What are we going to do with this? What are we doing? What are we doing? What's going on? You gonna think we're about it? Okay. So you've got some steps now, and you've got safe spaces. You're close to the Frank. They have workshops all the time. So all right, piqued my interest. Did did you get PK? Did, did you get <laughs> all right, we good. All right, perfect. My friend is an artist. Did your friend waste your time today? They good? We still friends. You still friends? Okay, good. All right. Um, I want to make sure I got this. This is really big for me. So, how to earn money being an artist. I need some questions. Do I need to get deeper into this? Do you want me to go deeper into how filmmakers specifically make art? I can talk about how filmmakers specifically make money. I can talk about how writers specifically make money. I can talk about how I specifically make money a little bit deeper. If you want any of that, please feel free to raise your hand. Oh, All right, okay, okay, all right. Okay, so let's start out with, okay, let's start out with the writer. Okay, writers make money in these ways. So specifically, oh, hold on here. Yeah, oh, that was cool, how that worked. That was awesome, okay. All right, so you think I did that on purpose. Okay, so here, is actually on this website here there are some resources that will tell you how I make money that's first so as a writer here are the ways that I get paid number one I do copy here's what copy is copy is when somebody hires me to tell their story but here's the fun thing about the copy I pick and choose the copy I do I am not going to write copy for a brand new pen. I'm not going to write copy for um, you know, some uh, random garbage <coughs> can or whatever else. I write copy specifically for people. So I help people describe themselves. I work with them and help them describe themselves in amazing and interesting ways. That's one. Now, as a writer, you can decide who you want to write copy for. This started as a referral service. I was talking to uh, a, uh, actually another writer, and they were telling me their story, and I told it back to them very succinctly. They're like, oh my god, you need to write my bio. <laughs> so, boom, I have a whole line of clients who all I do is I tell their story specifically to people. You may like to describe cars as a writer. There is a whole industry on that. There's industries for everything. Okay, but I, I prefer people. I like hanging out with people. As I said, the, the colleague of mine who is, is a YouTuber, we started out telling his story. Okay, so that's one. Two, this is the one I'm most well known for in the community, grant writing. I'm a boss at grant writing. Every grant I've ever written, I've gotten. The one grant I didn't get 
is the one I talked about in the beginning, the six-figure one. That was the most painful one. And that was because I didn't follow my intuition. My intuition said do this, and I was tired. Going back to the self-care, I was tired. I said, oh, I don't really need to add that, do I? I don't need to add that. <laughs> Whatever. Send. As I sent it, I was like, <gasps> no, you should have done it that way. <sighs> and yes, they sent me, sent me back within a couple of weeks. They're like, we're sorry. Like, hmm. <laughs> oh, please, but of course, they, they asked me to write another one. So. So I'll get it at some point. No big deal. So grant writing is the one I'm most well known for. Um, and that's, that's if you go into grant writing, there is a code of ethics on how you write grants. That is a workshop in itself. So you can do your research on that. OK, um, also as a writer, uh, I write screenplays. for commercials. That's unknown work. That's work you have to get through an agency. Again, figure out what your ideas are. Write them down. Protect them. I protect myself with these by having certain kinds of contracts. It's worth your research. It's worth the time to do the research on that. This is, this is just right in, let me see. Am I doing everything? Ah, other way, the most obvious way is this, the book. I've got two more books coming. One of them is called Be Your Own Answer, a self-care guide to artists, for artists, teachers, and leaders. Um, I'm producing that one in conjunction with some other people because uh, when I'm going back to South by Southwest in March, my presentation is called Be Your Own Answer. So, very easy way for me to connect the book to my presentation. Several iterations of the same idea. For Be Your Own Answer, I also do workshops, such as the one you're in right now. <laughs> workshops, anybody who is an artist. Remember I said, always be communicating, and always be communicating your value. Always be communicating and always be communicating your value. One of the most easy ways to communicate your value is by creating workshops. I have a workshop on workshops. Because <laughs> 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 I've been doing workshops for about two decades. I have a workshop on workshops. <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually being, uh, and see, iterations, it's actually being uh, developed into an online course. Ah. So yes, because most people want to do workshops online, and most of the people who want to produce their own workshops don't have time to come in. So I have a workshop on workshops, right. <laughs> so, um, so that's writing. I haven't even touched on, on everything. Speaking. Um, if I do performances, uh, I'm also a theater artist. As a theater artist, as a storyteller, as a theater artist, I've done uh, storytelling for local organizations. I've done storytelling for organizations across the country, um, Minneapolis, DC, uh, New York. So I do a lot of speaking. Um, <coughs> All of these things are paid in some way, shape, or form. Um, money is really awesome, yeah? Tell me. Do you do coaching? Yes. One-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Nice. So, um, and that is, that is I, I pick and choose that as well. So yes, uh, coaching is a way. Um, and I do that because um, one of the other ways that I get uh, paid is as a teacher. This is easy. If you're a student of mine, can you stand up, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you guys are awesome. This is Kyla, and that's Venetia.
Alicia, thank you, Missy. Awesome. So, so they're awesome because they took time. These are teenagers who actually took time out, and they're getting 20 points extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting extra credit. Um, but, but also, I mean, this is something teaching them is something I brings me a whole bunch of joy. Um, they will tell you I am a oddball in their class, and that is because I'm having fun. So that, so we're still on writing. I haven't even really dug into the writing stuff yet. We're still on the writing. These are iterations of the same thing, just telling a story. I haven't even dug into the filmmaking yet. You are going to look at your work in a new way. Oh my goodness, there is money to be made from being a creative person. Visual artists, like if I could riff on visual artists, visual artists can make tangible things. What? I used to pray to be able to make my writing tangible in some way, shape, or form, other than a book. Right? Um, <coughs> there's so many ways. Visual artists also could be doing workshops with people. Visual artists could be um, uh, one of the uh, a visual artists that I just started working with. I looked at his work on Instagram and I told him, you know, you could be doing interior design. Blew his mind. He's like, really? I was like, yeah, you could be doing interior design. Because of how you compose things. Like, it's very, you understand space, spatial relationships, things like that. Really? <laughs> he opened up a whole line of business in interior design. Iterations of the work you do, it's a seed. Everything you do is a seed. I didn't even get into the filmmaking. I think I'm probably out of time. <laughs> so, but um, I'm here. Uh, I'm very happy to, to speak to people afterwards. You've got um, magazines. These are the free things. So the magazines are free. As I told you already, what am I doing with the books? I'm selling them. Because why we're making money. But I'm not selling them here because we I don't have an agreement with a friend to do that. So you can find my books on Amazon. Um, but feel free to take these with you. They have articles. There's an article on me here. Uh, the other way that I make as a writer, um, I love to do keynote speeches. Uh, I have <coughs> spoken to all kinds of corporations, nonprofits, for profits, whatever. I love telling stories. Um, and um, I've made appearances. So, like, I've done M MC work, things like that. Uh, your, your limit to making money is, is, is you. Trust the things that give you joy, but protect them and protect yourself, too. Yes, ma'am. Do you also work with a, a lawyer to help you on the protecting part all, all the time? <laughs> Yes. You get to a point, so, so that's a very good question about the protection. Some stuff you can do with Google, right? So a non-disclosure agreement is really easy to find on Google, and you can download it and you can adjust it. However, you get to a place where you then start to, when you raise your profile, you're going to get to a place where you need to start to engage and spend money with a lawyer. It's absolutely necessary. I had. Um, something happened recently um, for the sake of, of being positive. I had something happen recently to my image um, and I had to engage an a attorney. Completely worth it. If you don't have, if you don't think you have any value, you're not going to spend money on, your, on yourself. You're going to wait for other people to protect you. You're going to wait for other people to, to, to value you. When you have value in your own work, you'll spend the money the places you need to spend the money. You'll hire the accountant. You'll hire the lawyer. I hired a graphic designer. I didn't come up with that. I can't. Like, if you watch me draw, like, I, I, it's horrible. Kids will tell you I, I can't draw. Okay. But he said, I want to do something interesting for you. That's because I had a, a, a relationship with him for a while. Like, I was talking with him and saying, here, 
and I paid him because what do I want? I want to be what? Paid. I want to be paid. So if you have value, you're going to spend value so you can make the value back. Don't be afraid. If you want to be a hobby artist, you're going to try to do it yourself. If this is your life, you're going to do make the investments you need to make. I was like, oh my god, a street sign. That's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so cool. Like, that's a duh for everybody now, right? But, like, it wasn't a duh. I was like, oh my god, it's a great color, too. I like the color green. Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> right? But seriously. <laughs> I even have my own font. It's really cool. <coughs> you know, so. Yeah, green for money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mom, you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you spend, if you want value, you need to spend some value. Stop being cheap. Stop being cheap. Build relationships with professionals who are going to create the safe space for you to sustain your work. Uh, I think uh, if there's if there are no other questions, you can find me here at beyourownanswer.com, backslash self care. I'm at narissastreet.com as well. Uh, the things are here. If you want to find me on Instagram, I'm at Possibility Guru. Um, I am always open to conversation. You can email me, get my information, whatever way you need to. I'm very, very grateful to the Frank. I'm very grateful to you for giving me your attention. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's truly nothing that I can say to wrap up that even compares to anything that Nurse has to say, but um, just from all of us here, um, here from the Frank, from I know the audience, um, thank you so much. Um, you know, as an ours administrator, I think that that always be communicating is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly true. And always be communicating on every single level. Um, answer emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. we've had this conversation. She's like, oh my gosh, I love having you here. And I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm just, I just, I just, want, I'm just grateful to have an opportunity to share something. I wish I had all of this information when I was starting out. I wish I had all of this information when I was starting out. I wish I had a supportive space to explore things. But these are the things that you have to do for yourself. You have to care for yourself as an artist. The world is not set up for you to care for yourself. So as an artist, we are the ones who are some, uh, we are the ones who bring inspiration. So we have to care for ourselves first or our audience suffers. Mm -hmm. so, so I am very grateful. Yeah, answer emails. Um, be grateful to the people who give you an opportunity to speak um, and, and give you an opportunity to share your work. So, yeah. well, we're all very lucky. A lot of us go through many years of you know art school education just to get some of this information. So this really this really was a fast track. Uh, stay in very contact. <laughs> it, it really, really was. I mean, everything is incredibly, incredibly astute. So mm -hmm. stay in contact with Narissa. You know, find her on all of her platforms. Um, reach out to her. She's an incredible asset to our whole community. Um, and otherwise, we have our next show opening yeah. next week, November 15th. As always at the Frank, we do all kinds of free workshops, lectures, we have um, art pop-up events once a month, so those of you who are interested in communicating with others about what it is that you're working on, what, like regardless of what discipline it is, come to our come to our fine contemporaries arts mixers. Tell us what you're doing. We want to know. We do engage people um, who come and share their work with us. So we'd love to see you all here again. Okay. And one, and one last thing, um, because I'm always communicating, I need to do a selfie. Um, if you do not want to be in said selfie, feel free to leave, and, and I, I will absolutely take it personally. Um, <laughs> no, I will not take it personally. 
But, okay, you ready? So, oh my gosh, yes, yes. I should have Kyla do the selfie because I know, come on. Because yeah. Kyla knows exactly what she's doing. She, you saw her, she got up like, what? I, I know, Miss Street, I'm coming. <laughs> Kyla, do my selfie. Please. Don't do that. I can't say it. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. All right, ready? Are you ready? Look, 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 look my girl. Ready? One, two, three. It gives you five, five second countdown. Everybody say, M. <laughs> <laughs>